Today we're going to tie a fly for you. This is a crayfish pattern that I've been working on and uh, it's kind of a combination of a couple of different techniques. If you can see it right here, um, got a 60 degree bin jig hook. In fact, it's a size 2 hook, gamakatsu hook. And um, tie these in several different collars. Got medium size eyes on the front. But this technology right here, this part in the middle right here, is from Casey Smart with two T's. Uh, he ties a minnow called the Deadhead Minnow, and um, that has worked for me rather well this spring. But I am now using that technology here to tie a crayfish pattern. And um, this has been pretty productive, in fact, very productive. So we're going to tie one of those for you today. Um, I've already got the lead eyes, medium size lead eyes on here. Um, in fact, you can see they're about oh, a little forward of halfway back. And I've got some pumpkin collared silly legs. And we're going to use pumpkin today. And you can tie these in a bunch of different collars, but we're going to take about a half a strip of these silly legs and simply going to cut these in two at about half. So we're going to use half in the back and half in the front on the fly. And this fly, this fly is meant to be jigged along the bottom and that's how it's been very effective. So we're going to start by taking our pumpkin silly legs, placing those on the back with a couple of soft loops. I like to kind of just like its bucktail, force them down. Then go ahead and wrap the fibers forward. Doesn't have to be too pretty there because it's going to be covered up here in just a minute. Always like to use a little head cement as we go because I think that kind of keeps things in place. So go ahead and use it freely as you would like to. Now, the second thing we're going to do is we're going to use a brush. Many of you know what a brush is or you know how to make a brush. If not, you can buy them already made. I make my own in different colors. Today we're going to use one that's uh, it has got brown with some silver in there. And in fact, that happens to be kind of the color of crayfish here in our local creeks. And so that's the key to this whole thing. I also have some flashaboo here. And so we're going to take a few long pieces of this silver flashaboo going to tie in and directly on top of the silly legs to kind of give the uh, um, once again resembling a crayfish in the back end and and this pattern you're going to find is if you can use it with floating line that's what I like to use it with makes for a great jigging pattern so we're going to take our brush got a little bit of a brush here again with brown silvers etc and we're going to tie it in just so it comes into the back of the eyes and we're going to work our thread forward covering up all that and again I kinda like to use head cement quite sparingly here put a little layer on there now I've got a little tool here and this is something I kinda came up with this is a grapefruit spoon with a piece of velcro on the back of it if you've worked with brushes you'll understand why this works out so well but we're going to take our brush now and we're simply going to comb it out just like we were doing its hair and we're going to comb these fibers backwards now we're going to start to palmer this forward and we're going to keep working this over the top and keep palmering this out using the spoon here when we get to the front we're going to go ahead and come across with a few loops at this point in time you can even separate out the, the fibers here and a couple more wraps and we're going to get rid of this part of the brush okay so now it looks like it's got a bad hairdo and that's kind of where it's at we're simply going to go around the eyes and compress and wrap backwards here just enough room for us to use 
our second set of silly legs. And we're going to leave that alone for right now. A little more head cement. And we're going to take our second set of silly legs and we're going to tie those in backwards. Right over the top of the eyes. A couple loose wraps. I always use a little safety clip or safety pin that helps out to keep things together keeps those legs kind of out of my way and we're going to pull that together now okay now we're going to move our legs to the back pull all our fibers together run our thread forward and we're going to wrap it right over the top with a loose wrap and again use your clip to kind of keep the legs together and out of your way and we've got the nucleus of our fly now all we're going to do is go ahead and come in and finish the fly and finish it off here and as you can tell these legs up front will get to be difficult but there's a finished fly for now one more head cement up front and now we're going to go back and we're going to work on the back end and again we're going to comb backwards through these fibers and we're going to try to pull them all backwards and basically what we're doing is we're encasing the silly legs on the back now right now is a good time to come in here and trim what few extra tops of the silly legs are back there so now this is where the technique from Casey Smart comes in this is tulip super glitter buy it at Walmart buy it at a craft store it's about 350 a bottle and it's fabric paint tulip glitter fabric paint and we're going to add a small part all the way around here right at the front kinda like that Now we're going to take a toothpick, simple toothpick, and we're going to roll this backwards, rolling the toothpick, rolling the toothpick. And what this is going to do is going to give this a hard case. Now we're going to take our fibers and we're going to pull them all. And this is where you can kind of give it the shape that you want. But what that's going to do right there is it's going to hold these legs within the fibers. When this dries, it will dry solid. And once again, this is where I like to take my little clip, put it right on there, and when that dries, which is going to take three days to do, you're going to get something that looks like this. And you want to fish this with floating line on the bottom swim it through pools, let it jump from rock to rock to rock and um, it's just been a real small mouth killer so this is a nice crayfish pattern and um, I have to once again to give a lot of the credit to Casey Smart and this technology now these um, brushes that you make or buy can be in any color match the crayfish that are in your creek here in southern Indiana ours are more brown than anything and they're about this size and if you want to catch bigger smallmouth frankly I feel like you need to fish a little bit bigger crayfish